This is a heritage unit. This is a heritage unit. And this is definitely a heritage unit. But what about this mystery engine? We'll take a look next. It's 1988, not too long after two big railroads became one, Norfolk and Western and the Southern Railway. And this GP38-2 is working territory once operated by the Southern. Okay, it's actually 2023, but this old high hood is still going strong. The locomotive was built by General Motors Electromotive Division in 1977. The GP38-2 was one of EMD's best sellers with more than 2,200 made. The GP stands for general purpose, and the unit has 2,000 horsepower. EMD's Dash 2 line had a more reliable electrical system than previous models with modular, solid-state electrical components. Okay, so the specs aren't all that impressive. This is a utilitarian workhorse, but this particular unit's heritage is what makes it interesting. Look closely at the lettering on the engine's long hood and you'll see signs of its past. That's right, its Southern Railway lettering is starting to come through. You can also see this engine had lettering under its road number for Southern Railway subsidiary AGS, or Alabama Great Southern. In total, the Southern Railway had 257 of these GP38-2s. Of course, the most distinctive feature here is the high short hood. Long after this stopped being standard on locomotives, the Southern and Norfolk and Western kept ordering it. Another unusual feature is that the unit is set up for long hood forward operation, so right now, this is considered the rear of the locomotive. This was another unusual Southern Railway tradition. Of course, a little F marks the front of the locomotive. So why exactly did the Southern order high short hoods and operate long hood forward? Well, that's a question rail fans have been asking for a long time, but a Trains Magazine article by Ron Flannery explains it pretty well. The Southern wanted its locomotives to be set up for bi-directional operation. According to the article, most land side signals are on the right, so having the engineer on the right side of the cab made sense. If the unit was running long hood forward, he'd be on the right side and would be able to clearly make out the signal. If the locomotive changed direction, he'd be on the left side, but the short hood would not obstruct his vision. The unit also didn't need to be turned at the end of its run. Of course, running long hood forward also provided extra protection for the crew in the event of an accident. GEs like this were some of the last locomotives to be set up like this, although they did have low noses. It's not uncommon to see Norfolk Southern locomotives running long hood forward in 2023. Here's a freshly rebuilt GE doing just that in South Atlanta. You'll notice here that Norfolk Southern puts ditch lights on both ends of its engines. The visibility is probably okay here, but running this ST70 ACE long hood forward has got to be tough with those huge angled radiators sticking out. Okay, so what about those high short hoods? This was standard on first generation diesels, like this GP7 that once belonged to the Chesapeake and Ohio, and now occasionally pulls trains on the Stone Mountain Scenic Railroad. So why did the Southern Railway continue to order its engines like this when it was no longer standard? Well, there are a lot of different answers to this question, and frankly, I'm not 100% sure which is right, but here's what I've read. There was a labor agreement in place that made railroads turn the locomotive so it was facing forward before each run. The Southern would have hoods on both ends so each side could be considered the front. Remember, many Southern Railway locomotives were set up for long hood forward operation. Not having to turn a locomotive around would save time. Of course, if the locomotive was running short hood forward, there would be some added safety if there was a collision, but it's unclear if that factored into the railroad's purchasing decisions. So what's inside the high hood of this SD40? Well, like many locomotives, the nose houses a toilet. 
One advantage here, you can stand up. Meanwhile, the GP38-2 we're looking at here most likely has equipment for remote control operations in its high hood. That's right, this thing is or was capable of being run by an operator with a special belt pack who's not inside the cab. With its old lettering and numbers starting to show through, you may be wondering what the design under all that Norfolk Southern paint would have looked like. Well, probably a lot like this. This is Southern Railway number 2601 an EMD GP30 built in 1963. It's preserved and still runs at the North Carolina Transportation Museum in Spencer. Unlike the GP38-2 we've been following, the short hood on this engine is designated as the front. GP30s were easy to spot because of their roofs. The top of the locomotive's cab was streamlined due to a centralized airflow system right behind it. Supposedly, General Motors automotive designers had a hand in the shape up here. Of course, high shorted locomotives are becoming increasingly rare on Class 1 railroads. Many have either been retired, sold, or had their noses chopped down. NS4717 is an ex-Southern high hood that's been rebuilt with Norfolk Southern's custom Admiral cab. And NS3086 once worked for Norfolk and Western. Now, the last time I saw number 5230 was at the beginning of July 2023, as it was heading south through Locust Grove, Georgia. Okay, so there's a place where I always see old high hoods. This is the Norfolk Southern Training Center in McDonough, Georgia, which is just south of Atlanta. I've seen high hoods here that are clearly showing their age. Under its road number, this one had lettering for Southern Railway subsidiary, Cincinnati, New Orleans, and Texas Pacific Railway. Other high hoods I've seen here are pretty close to pristine. These have been repainted with Norfolk Southern's contemporary paint scheme. And while I've never seen an official heritage unit out here, I have seen heritage rolling stock, like this Norfolk and Western caboose. And how about this little Conrail scale test car? The training center is a fascinating place, but just a reminder that this is all private property, so don't trespass. Okay, so I asked earlier if 5230 is a heritage unit, and I would say definitely. Honestly, it's far more interesting than the modern GEs and EMD heritage units that Norfolk Southern painted several years ago. I mean, sure, it's been adapted over the years with new technology, but it's still on the rails and in service as far as I know. I mean, that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.